if a child is exposed to a certain sex, does it explain the age at which they will start school? Probably being the question. My child being boy and the child being girl, does that explain the age at which they will start school? Does the sex explain the outcome age? That's the question. You get the sense? So this is an example in which you can use a teachers. And how do you do this? You and I talked about how you come about with summarizing your data, right? To summarize your data, we said it is possible for you to use what we called the mean, right? We said you go ahead and compute the mean age at which the boys start school and the mean age at which the girls start school and see whether they are different. Right? And basically, the T test, the question it asks is that, is there a difference between the two means? So the T test is comparing the two means. Difference between two means is what the T test is doing. So what it's getting is mean, in this case mean for boys, minus say mean for girls. And it gets that difference. The difference between the mean age of boys and the mean age of girls. Your now hypothesis is that this difference is going to be a zero. Right? But ultimately, once you do the actual study, you would come and determine what the difference is. And then you ask the question, Using the teachers is going to test the knife now by saying, is this difference large enough for us to attribute that difference to the sex? Right? Is the difference we are going to see between the mean age of the boys and the mean age of the girls as they start school large enough or significant that we should conclude that by the sex? we can actually have a different age at which a boy starts to move or a girl starts to move. This is basically what the T-test is doing. So in this case, what the T-test is going to do is that, for example, you go ahead and find the mean age for boys. The mean age for boys, let's say, is going to give you something like a 3.8 years. Then you say minus the mean age for girls, which is going to be like, say, 2.1, right? And then you get your actual difference between the two means, right? You get a difference between the two means. This minus that, you get a difference of 1.7 years. So the statistical test is going to observe a difference between two means of 1.7. Say the mean difference in the age of the girls and the boys as they start school is that the boys start at an age 1.7 years more than the age at which the girls start school. Is that clear? Once this has been determined, then there will be a question to say, is this difference observed significant such that it can be attributed to the sex? The difference of 1.7, is it significant that it should be attributed to the sex? And what do you use to determine whether there is a significant difference? This is where you obtain your p value. And last time we were talking about the p value. If the statistical test does the test and determines whether this difference of 1.7 is actually significant or not and gives you a p value such as 0 0.01, what conclusion do you make? about the difference of 1.7. Is that 1.7 statistically significant or not? 
Is it significant or is it not? Zero point zero one. Significant. What do you think, Lord? It's above zero point zero five. Zero point zero one. It's below zero point zero five. It's below zero point zero five. So then, what do we conclude? It's not. It's significant. Guys, if you go through this stuff. <laughs> It is significant, right? So, there is a statistically significant difference between the age at which the boy starts school and the age at which the girl starts school. Therefore, what you can conclude is that there is a difference between the age at which the boy starts school and the age at which the girl starts school. Which means, being of the certain sex, has the ability to either reduce or increase the age at which it starts. Do you get the sense? In short, this is what is actually going to happen. You should know that it is possible that you can get a P5 such as 0 0.08. 0 .08. What if you get a p value of 0 0.08? What conclusion do you make? Is there a statistically significant difference at which, at, at the age at which the boy starts school compared to the age at which the girl starts school? Is there a statistically significant difference? No. 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 When you get a p value such as 0 0.08, it's telling you that there is not enough evidence against the now hypothesis that there is a significant difference. You can observe a difference, a mean difference such as 1.7 years between the age of the boys and the girls as they are starting school, even by chance. You can observe such kind of even when, in reality, there is no difference between the age of the boys and the age of the girls as they are starting school. Is that okay? Yes. This is something possible to observe, even when there is no real difference. Is that okay? Yes. So, in essence, the statistical test that will do something like this is the T-test. This is basically what the T test is doing. It's determining the difference between the two means. Difference between means is what it's doing. So now, because it's doing a test based on the difference between two means, and we call it a parametric test, we want to look at what assumptions would therefore be linked to this? Remember when we were explaining why we should use the median rather than the mean, we were emphasizing the fact that the mean is affected by the presence of extreme values, right? If there's an extremely high value, such as there was an old man who started school at an age of 80, in this class, it would skew the mean upwards and you ultimately make a wrong conclusion ultimately by using the mean. Therefore, one definite assumption of the t-test would be that you only use the t-test if there are no extreme values. There is no old man in class. That's the only time you use the teachers. So this is one of the important assumptions. And this is referred to as there should be a normal distribution in the outcome variable. Outcome <coughs> should, the outcome Sure.
should be normally distributed. This is the only time we use the mean as a good measure of central tendency. And therefore, this is the only time we should use the T test as a good statistical test for determining the difference, for determining, for testing the null hypothesis, right? When the outcome is normally distributed, if the outcome is not normally distributed, you can't use the mean. Therefore, if the outcome is not normally distributed, you can't use the T test. Because what the T test is doing is determining the difference between two means. Do you get the sense? If the outcome is not normally distributed, there's an old man in class, you can't use the mean as your measure of central tendency. Therefore, since the t-test is based on the difference between two means, you can't use the t-test for testing your now hypothesis when there is an old man in class, when there are extreme values. Therefore, t-test is used only when the outcome is normally distributed. Does this make sense why this should be the case? Does it make sense? Yes. Use T test only when the distribution of the outcome is known. After all, it's only then that you would use the mean. Make sense? There are other assumptions that you have to think of. And some of them could be that the variance is equal. This is actually referred to as the assumption of heteroscedasticity. But at the end of the day, it really, really still speaks about the same thing. That the difference between these, uh, these observed, observed values and the mean you observe is actually supposed to be equal, equal between what you see in the two groups that you're comparing, right? So the variance here and the variance there is actually supposed to be equal and it should also be normally distributed. It still speaks about the issue of having extreme value. That's what it talks about. The other assumption, which is actually usually overlooked, is the assumption that the sampling of the observations should actually have been random. This assumption, guys, is one thing that you should always take care of. This is why we can tell you to say, do not use non-random non sampling, right? Non-probability-based sampling. Because if you use them, almost all statistical tests have this assumption linked to them. The assumption that the sampling of the participants was actually done randomly is part of all statistical tests. So there was the assumption of random sampling of participants. So you can't come and say I used I used non-random sampling methods to select my participants and therefore I will use a t-test. That is inappropriate. Because the t-test has this assumption linked to it. So one of the crucial assumptions for the t-test is the assumption that the distribution of the outcome should be known to mean there should be no extreme values and this is the same one to which the variance is actually linked to. Is that clear? So basically, before you even do the t-test, you need to probably confirm with the assumptions, have my assumptions been met so that I can use the t-test? So the first thing you do is you look at what kind of data am I dealing with. My data, my exposure is actually uh, categorical, I have two groups, particularly it's dichotomous, therefore, yes, there are that passes. The next thing is my outcome is continuous, yes, this passes. 
T test is possible to be used. Then the next question is, let me check whether the assumptions of the t-test have been met so that I can see whether the t-test can be used. Right? What are the assumptions? 